people have always tried to comprehend the world around them. Today, we learn about the world not only on Earth, but also far beyond, beyond the solar system and even our galaxy. Thanks to this, we've discovered countless celestial bodies, for surely our universe has all kinds of cosmic objects. So let's take a trip to see the most unusual ones. We'll begin our journey with the largest void in the universe. It is so huge that time inside seems to stop. Next, we are going to visit the stars inside our galaxy whose very existence seems implausible. They keep everyone puzzled and leave us with more questions than answers. Next, we'll take a trip beyond the Milky Way to see zombie galaxies. Do you want to find out what it is? Two of the stops will be deadly magnetars that can extract iron from a person's blood being thousands of kilometers away and black holes whose very existence is frightening. This is an epic journey to the most unusual space objects. Imagine a place where there is nothing for millions of light years ahead. Absolutely nothing. Total darkness. A place so dark that it seems that time itself is put on hold. But what is it? Let me explain. We know that we orbit the sun and the Sun orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way, along with its 50 neighbors, goes around the invisible gravitational center in the local galaxy group located inside the Virgo supercluster. Just like other superclusters, it turned out to be a part of a much bigger La Nia Kea supercluster. Inside the circle, the objects don't orbit the same point but gravitate towards a super-heavy Great Attractor anomaly in the center. We can't see it due to the specific location of our galaxy. Our galactic disk obstructs our view. But today, we're interested not in the attractor itself, but the eerie, empty space in front of it. Dipole Repeller Such empty areas in outer space are called voids. And if you look at the universe from the outside, it would seem like an infinite network of galactic threads divided by empty spaces called voids. This is what our world looks like if you could capture it in one picture. 10 billion light years connected with galactic threads. Voids are one of the biggest structures in nature that occupy most space in the universe. Today, we will focus on one of these voids. This is the Boötes Void. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video. When we gaze at the stars, it seems that they are dispersed evenly throughout the sky. But this is an illusion, as all stars are in galaxies. They are located relatively close to each other, making gravitational clusters. But the emptiness created between them is nothing compared to the scale of the void. The Boötes Void is one of the biggest voids in the whole universe. It is located 700 million light years away from our planet, near the Boötes constellation from which it borrowed its name. The Great Void was discovered in 1981 by Robert Kirshner and his team. For many years, scientists have been asking themselves about the nature of this void, how it was created, and what exactly lurks in the darkness. The diameter of the Boötes Void is estimated to be 330 million light years, which is astonishing considering the fact that it comprises 0.27% of the diameter of the known universe. The size of our Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light years, which is minuscule compared to this void. When scientists first started to study the void, they discovered eight galaxies. This is very little compared to other gravitational clusters which have already been explored. Before long, 52 more galaxies have been discovered at a great distance from each other. According to astronomer Greg Aldering from the University of Minnesota, the scale of the void is such that if the Milky Way had been in the center of the Boötes Void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s they would have been so far away that they would have been invisible to the telescopes that existed up until the 60s. 
At that point, our telescopes got good enough that if we had been in that void, we would have been able to see the dim light from the other galaxies and begin to fathom their existence. So far, only 60 galaxies have been found in the Boötes void. Using a rough estimate of about one galaxy every 10 million light years, four times as far as Andromeda galaxy from Earth, there should have been approximately 2,000 galaxies in the Boötes void. Upon discovering this great void, astronomers have noticed how mysterious and unique this area is. When taking into account the distance between the galaxies inside the void, it's clear that it can be called a paranormal area. Just to put this in perspective, our Milky Way galaxy has around two dozen neighbors in the space of around three million light years in the cross-section. Taking into account that the average distance between galaxies in the universe is around several million light years, the Great Boötes Void should have included 10,000 galaxies if dispersed with the same density. You can agree that the difference in density is just enormous and can't be explained rationally. Scientists have managed to calculate the volume of the Great Void. They assigned it a non-system value called parsec, which equals three light years. Now, you'd be surprised to know that the estimated volume of the Boötes Void is 236,000 cubic megaparsecs. Let's leave aside the size of this void and focus instead on its content. It sounds paradoxical, but the void mostly consists of emptiness. Its vacuum space is isolated from everything that you can observe in other galaxies. You won't see any dust, dirt, or stones there. There's no place for even the smallest particles, such as photons. This is why scientists call the Boötes Void a desert in outer space. The Boötes Void is submerged into darkness. It is so dark that it seems that time itself or any movement is put on hold. To this day, scientists don't understand how simple particles interact in this space. Unfortunately, we might not know this for many years to come. Even if the interaction can happen, how many tens of thousands of years are needed for this process to take place within the void? Compared to this time frame, the history of mankind is like a blazing meteorite flying through the Earth's atmosphere. The nature of the Boötes Void gives us a lot to think about. Needless to say, the Void's visitors would be, at the very least, shocked to see this isolation, extreme distances between galaxies, and pitch-dark space. Moreover, the Boötes Void is probably the most ideal vacuum in outer space, so we should study its effects. Dirt and dust would be rare to come by in this space, but so would even particles. It would take thousands of years for the particles to interact, that is, if the interaction could ever happen in the first place. This extremely low density means that when a pattern of neutrinos enters one side of the void, it looks exactly the same upon exit. The same goes for photons, particles of matter, having much more mass than both photons and neutrinos, would of course get pulled towards the walls of the void. Because of this state-preserving property, the Boötes void may one day be seen as the ultimate time capsule, fire off a pattern of photons, only for the pattern to be rediscovered hundreds of millions of years later when it reaches the other side. Perhaps the Boötes void will serve as a proving ground for the high-speed dragsters of the future, moving at 99.99% the speed of light. Its extremely low density would certainly be appealing to anyone who wants to set speed records without that pesky intergalactic dust getting in the way. Of course, scientists are keen to know how this paranormal area came to be. The Boötes Void is a unique place that cannot be compared to anything within the known universe. Some scientists argue that the Great Void was created when several small voids came together. Even though this idea is hard to comprehend, it's completely plausible, taking into account the nature of space. This phenomenon resembles small soap bubbles coming together. 
Astronomer Greg Aldering once noticed that the galaxies located in voids have a curiously tubular structure, which can be an important clue. It was him who suggested that the void can come together much like soap bubbles merging into one great bubble. As for the tubular galaxies, these might be the remnants of the borders between the smaller voids. Those galaxies are stranded now inside a supervoid. But if the universe lasts long enough, they may get cleared out of it. Says Aldering, the long arm of gravity never quits. There is another, albeit more radical possibility, and one that has likely not been considered in the scientific literature. The Boötes Void could be the result of an expanding Kardashev III scale civilization. As the colonization bubble expands outward from its home system, the civilization dims each star and subsequently each galaxy it encounters by blanketing it in a Dyson shell. This might also explain why the void has such a nice spherical shape. Given that the void is about 700 million light years from Earth and that intelligent life could have emerged in the universe about 4 billion years ago, this ancient civilization may have had enough time to perform this astonishing feat of cosmological engineering. Now, this is pure speculation, but it's worth throwing it out there as a possibility given the strangeness of this phenomenon. Needless to say, the discovery of the void has thrown conventional cosmological thinking out the window. Since its discovery, astronomers have had to revise their notions of galaxy formation given what we now know about the extreme non-uniform distribution of matter throughout the universe. Finally, the Boötes Void provides another humbling reminder of the vastness and sparseness of the cosmos. The universe that we see is too impossibly large for us to comprehend. Our place within it is a tiny, insignificant microscopic spark. But all that said, as alone as we may appear here on Earth, at least we have a starscape to gaze upon when we look up into the night sky. HD 101065, or the Chbilsky Star, but we might as well call it plutonium, because it seems to have a lot of plutonium, as well as other super heavy elements which are simultaneously unstable and very short-living. However, these elements shouldn't be there, and their presence can be explained by one of these options. First, there are some elements which we didn't expect to find in nature. Second, postulating the existence of super-heavy elements is a mistake to begin with. Or third, aliens created artificial elements and dumped them into this star. Let's find out which one it is. Do you know what makes this object so unique? Its highly unique spectrum. Everyone who has seen it claims it was one of the weirdest star spectrums they have ever come across. A spectrum reveals which elements a star contains. The stumbling block for the researchers was that they couldn't get comprehensive data on how many elements it contains. Some scientists talk about an infinite number of lines, which makes them impossible to study in detail. How can this be? Astronomers have studied the Chbilsky star since the 1960s, but to this day, they have no idea what elements it consists of. One theory suggests this might be because it contains elements and isotopes scientists have never discovered in nature. The data was obtained using one of the methods which connects the type of light emitted by a star with elements it contains. The results made scientists realize their previous conclusions concerning the contents of HD 101065 were inconsistent. First, it appears from the spectrum that it contains almost no iron, which is very strange by itself. Most stars survive by fusing lighter elements with heavier ones, and these fusions often result in iron or some other elements. Second, this star is rich in lanthanides, even heavier elements, such as holmium and europium, which are present in lesser quantities in common stars. At the same time, Professor Chbilsky has suggested that this star has existed long enough to create a lot of heavy elements. 
According to several studies, this star also contains atoms that are not supposed to be there. In particular, atoms of promethium and plutonium. These elements and their isotopes have a relatively short half-life, a period it takes half the atoms of a radioactive substance to decompose. For example, promethium has a half-life period of less than 20 years. Plutonium has a maximum half-life period of about 24,000 years, which is a relatively small number for a star. This means that if those elements aren't new compositions or they aren't being replenished, they should have completely decomposed by the time when people appeared and learned how to use telescopes. So far, there are several possible explanations. Astronomers argue that these atoms could have appeared as a result of creating a supernova, or current reactions catalyzed by a neutron star close by. Unfortunately, very little data support these theories. However, there might exist another possible explanation which has nothing to do with the latter. Chbilsky's star might contain some super-heavy elements and isotopes which haven't been discovered yet. After some time, these super-heavy atoms can break down into short-living isotopes that we can observe. In particular, these atoms can belong to the following three elements. Fluorovium, unbehexium, or unbenillium. Scientists have managed to create as few as 100 atoms of fluorovium in the laboratory setting. As for unbehexium and unbenillium, they exist only in theory. We haven't yet discovered any of these elements in nature. If the described theory is correct, studying Chbilsky's star will enable us to explore these elements in real life. There is a slight chance that isotopes inside this heavenly body are a part of the so-called stability island a hypothetical group of super-heavy and super-stable elements which have long been pursued by scientists. But today, it's clear that everything is not that easy. Thanks to the scientific findings, we know that Chbilsky's star belongs to a special type of AP stars, or chemically peculiar A stars. As a rule, regular A-type stars are hot and don't have a magnetic field. But AP stars are cold on the surface, they have a strong magnetic field and quite long rotation periods. For some reason, these stars contain lots of lanthanides and little iron. So this means the Chbilsky star is not that unique after all. As if strange chemical composition wasn't enough, Chbilsky star is noted for its unusual movement pattern. A new analysis led by researchers from the Leibniz Institute for Astrophysics Potsdam in Germany has discovered that HD101065 isn't just composed of bizarre stuff, it also exhibits bizarre movement. And a team from Chile discovered that the star's rotation period stretches out over 188 years. Our analysis of newly acquired and historic longitudinal magnetic field measurements indicates that Chbilsky's star is also unusual with respect to its extremely slow rotation, the researchers state. That's a pretty long time for a star to do a 360, although slow rotation could be considered normal for AP stars, as I mentioned earlier. There is a chance that we've misinterpreted some information, which means that the Chbilsky star doesn't contain short-living isotopes. After all, this star's spectrum is difficult to identify. Spectrums usually have several relatively clear lines that correspond to various elements. But when it comes to this star, such lines occur almost everywhere. This has sparked a lively discussion as to what goes on, which continues even today. There is a questionable but quite popular theory which suggests that the star's composition resembles the products of artificial nuclear fission. Back in 1980, American scientists Daniel Whitmire and Jason Wright suggested that extraterrestrial civilizations can use their stars to store nuclear waste. They even pointed out that type A stars, such as Chbilsky's star, are most probably where this waste can be found. Such short-living, apparently artificial elements in A-type stars can be really seen as evidence of an artifact of a well-known SETI program. Rest assured, we will find an answer to the question of how these elements appeared on this star. Nonetheless, we should keep on trying to reveal this mystery.
because even if a SETI artifact won't find the evidence of the existence of extraterrestrial civilization, these findings will be of great interest to the scientists. Quite recently, scientists came up with a hypothesis that can explain the anomalous chemical contents of the star. It is based on the fact that a neutron star influences the atmosphere of Chbilsky's star, with which it makes up a closely linked system. Theoretically speaking, this hypothesis can be feasible. However, there's a big caveat. There are no neutron stars around. Indeed, scientists from the University of South Wales hypothesize that actinides in Chbilsky's star can be the evidence of slow degradation of super-heavy elements. The theory posits the existence of a so-called stability island that includes elements with a nucleus containing 114 or more protons. These are super-heavy elements, but at the same time, they are long-living. If we hypothesize the existence of such elements, then short-living plutonium, einsteinium, and other elements found on this star will simply be degradation products. In other words, we can discover a new isotope obtained as an element that exists in nature. Don't be surprised, there is nothing special. For example, helium was first found on the Sun. I think we all agree that Chbilsky's star's unique properties will remain a mystery for many scientists all around the world well into the future. For surely, whatever the answer to the mystery of Chbilsky's star might be, it's very exciting to know. A star called PSR J1719-1438 is probably one of the most fantastic objects in outer space that you've ever heard of. First, this is a neutron star, or a pulsar. Pulsars are quickly rotating neutron stars that emit sharply focused radio wave rays. When the star rotates, the rays reach right above the Earth, much like a beacon light, making a regular signal visible for our radio telescopes. However, it seems that the light is flickering. Pulsars are dubbed the universe's beacons. This star is 4,000 light years away from Earth and is 1.4 times heavier than the Sun, and it has a diameter of only 20 kilometers, which means that this star is the size of Manhattan. Its big mass, coupled with a small size, ensure extremely tight density. Just imagine, neutron stars are so dense that one spoonful of this star matter would weigh about a billion tons here on Earth. Breathtaking, isn't it? J1719-1438 is a neutron star with an extreme rotation speed. It is also known as a millisecond pulsar. It rotates around its axis over 10,000 times per minute. This means it takes only 5.8 milliseconds for the star to complete one rotation. Millisecond pulsars emit high-precision impulses, making them very sensitive to probes. After some time, any object orbiting such pulsars causes regular Doppler shifts in impulses, which enables us to ascertain the presence of a companion and to precisely measure the orbit's size and the object's mass. In general, around 70% of pulsars have companions of different types. It is a companion which makes the mystery of the star so beguiling. Its name is PSR J1719-1438b. It is as heavy as Jupiter, but its diameter is 2.3 times smaller, about 60,000 kilometers. This means that the planet is more than 3,000 times bigger than its star. The star's density is about 23 grams per centimeter cubed, which is equivalent to the density of platinum. Scientists consider 1438b to be a stellar remnant. Its outer layers have been forced out by a more massive pulsar which has left its carbon trace. The bottom line is, this combination of properties means that 1438b is, for all intents and purposes, a diamond. Moreover, the planet orbits a pulsar at a very short distance. Now isn't this truly fascinating? For the last 100 years, 
Scientists have been observing a star from the Libra constellation that is 190 light years away from us. This unusual heavenly body moves at an unbelievable speed of 1.3 million kilometers an hour. But more importantly, it is one of the oldest stars in the universe known to us. At first, the star's age was estimated to be about 16 billion years, but this calculation has caused a paradox to emerge. Why do you think that is? Being named after Methuselah, a 969-year-old biblical character, and located in the Libra constellation, this star surpasses the age of the universe, which is about 13.8 billion years old. This means that this star is older than the universe by 3 billion years. But how is it possible? Since it appears that the Big Bang happened after the star was created, either a commonly accepted date of the Big Bang was incorrect, or the age of the star was a little exaggerated. But even considering the more accurate data on brightness, contents, distance, and the structure of Methuselah, a team of researchers has estimated its age to be 14.5 billion years. With an 800 million year error margin, the lowest limit of age shows that the star was created almost 13.7 billion years ago, which is hardly younger than the universe we imagine today. Hubble measurements enabled astronomers to specify the distance to the Methuselah star, or HD 140283. By knowing the specific distance to the star, scientists were able to calculate the inner brightness of Methuselah needed to estimate its age. Moreover, they learned more about the burning speed, contents, and inner structure of the star, which also shed light on its probable age. For example, HD 140283 has a relatively high ratio of oxygen to iron, which makes the age of the star lower compared to what had been assumed. The Methuselah star has one more special feature. It literally rushes through the sky, moving at the speed of about 1.3 million kilometers an hour, and every thousand years, it moves by a width of a full moon. The most probable explanation for this is that this star was once a member of a dwarf galaxy, which merged with our Milky Way around 12 million years ago it could have contributed to the way the Methuselah star moves across the sky as it returns to the bounds of the Milky Way. Well, let's see what other surprises the stars have in store for us. A triple star system, which was one day traveling through the center of our galaxy, has approached a supermassive object in the center of the Milky Way at a dangerously close distance. This has led to capturing one star and forcing the remaining two towards the galaxy's edge. Further down the road, these two stars merged into one, a super hot blue star. Even though this course of events seems to be improbable, astronomers working with the Hubble Space Telescope confirm that such events might as well have taken place. They could have really created a superfast HE 0437 5439, one of the fastest stars known to us, moving at the speed of 2.5 million kilometers an hour, or 700 kilometers per second, towards the galaxy's edge. This movement is three times faster than the orbital speed of the Sun. To put this into perspective, the fastest man made object, Parker Solar Probe, has once reached a speed of 148 kilometers per second. But it's impossible for it, or any other man-made object, to maintain such a speed. HE 0437-5439 moves so fast that the gravitational pull of the Milky Way galaxy is too low to hold it within the limits of the galaxy. Therefore, this super-fast star will most probably leave its boundaries and enter intergalactic space in the future. Scientists called this vagabond star a hellish racer. It was discovered in 2005, and its unique movement was first observed in 2010. It is eight times heavier than the Sun. Such a high speed of the star's movement tells us that it was born far from its current location and has swiftly moved to the place we can see today. 
What kind of an object could have accelerated a star to such an extent? As calculations show, it could be done by a black hole, which is a million times bigger than the Sun. The thing is, when a double star comes close to a supermassive black hole, one star will be sucked into the black hole, while its companion will be forced out. There is a black hole like that in the center of the Milky Way, and it is 2.5 million times heavier than the Sun. And it could have actually accelerated HE0437-5439. But here, astronomers face the problem related to the fact that the time needed for the star to travel that far turned out to be more than three times longer than its age. The star has to be at least 100 million years old. However, its mass and the blue color indicate that it has been burning for the last 20 million years. Hence, the hellish racer star is too young to have come all the way from the galaxy's center to its current location. Either the scientists are mistaken about the star's age and it's older than it seems, or it was born and accelerated in a different place. The brightest minds all across the globe are working to unravel the mystery of this star's phenomenon. Some phenomena are hard to explain. This story began in 2009 when NASA launched the Kepler mission in search for exoplanets that is, planets outside the solar system. In particular, the satellite studied one region in the sky in the Cygnus and Lyra constellations of our galaxy. This area is marked with small squares. The satellite was registering the luminosity of over 150,000 stars for four years, recording data every 30 minutes. But how was it looking for planets in the first place? It was looking to catch a moment when a planet would pass between the telescope and the star, leading to a decrease in the star's luminosity due to a small portion of the stellar light being blocked. What you see here on the graph is a dip in the star's luminosity. This research method is called the transit method. But when looking for exoplanets, researchers found one of the most unusual mysteries of our universe. Let me explain what it is. To put this in perspective, I'll show you what a common graph of a star's luminosity looks like when a planet is detected by the transit method. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. There are no planets that significantly exceed its size. A planet the size of Jupiter reduces the star's brightness by about 1%. If we're talking about Earth with a radius 11 times smaller than Jupiter, its signal on the graph will be barely distinguishable. Now let's get back to our mystery. A group of researchers and enthusiasts looked through the data obtained by the Kepler telescope, striving to find new patterns until they stumbled upon this. There was a strange signal coming from a star called KIC. 8462852, located 1,480 light years from the Sun. In March 2011, the star's luminosity dropped by as much as 15%. Just remember that even the largest planets cause a 1% drop in the star's luminosity. Transits usually last for several hours, but in this case, it lasted one week and then the brightness came back to normal in a matter of days. In addition, the signal was asymmetrical, meaning that the object blocking the light emitted by the star wasn't round like a regular planet. That is, it's anything but similar to a regular planetary transit. Then nothing much happened until February 2013. It is then when the real madness began. The Tabby Star Phenomenon As I said, multiple dips in the light curve occurred, lasting for 100 days. Moreover, they all had irregular and unpredictable manner. Here, you can see some examples of light curves at different time periods. One can easily see how much these curves fluctuate. They have different irregular shapes that don't resemble each other, as well as have different durations. At one point, 
the star's luminosity dropped by as much as 20%. This indicates that the object blocking the light was literally humongous. For example, its area should be 1,000 times larger than that of the Earth. What researchers needed to do is figure out what was wrong with this star and explain its behavior. The star was eventually named Tabby Star after Tabitha S. Boyajian, the lead author of the study that reported the discovery. A significant drop in stellar luminosity can be observed in young stars that still have a protoplanetary disk of gas and dust. It is this disk that can block the light. But Tabby's star doesn't seem to be young. A second hypothesis attributes this luminosity drop to a large number of comets. But the problem with this version is that there must be quite a lot of comets, perhaps a thousand, maybe even tens of thousands of comets, to have such an effect. According to the study by Mohammed Sheikh, Richard Weaver, and Karen Dahman from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, published in 2016, the avalanche statistics associate the mysterious fluctuation in the star's luminosity with stellar processes occurring within the star itself rather than objects orbiting it. They then go on to say that this phenomenon occurs due to the star approaching a critical point of magnetic transition. To complicate matters even further, Bradley Schaefer shared a new discovery in his study showing that in addition to short-term variability, the star had an eclipse lasting for dozens of years. Such progressive dip in the stellar luminosity is highly unusual and difficult to reconcile with models involving internal stellar processes. But that's not the end of the story. When writing an article on the unusual twinkling of the star, Dr. Tabitha Boyajian learned that her colleague Jason Wright claimed that the Kepler telescope was so accurate that it could hypothetically detect huge alien megastructures around the stars. But what would these megastructures look like? If a civilization grows at a rate of 1% per year, it only takes about 3,000 years to grow 10 to the 12th power times. Imagine a civilization that has grown so large that it depleted all of its planet's energy and resources, and the closest source of energy is a local star, like our sun. This civilization could build huge structures, such as giant solar panels surrounding the star like a sphere and collecting its energy. All obtained light energy would be converted into another form, for example, into electrical energy, and then either transmitted somewhere, let's say by means of laser or radio waves, or applied on site. This is called the Dyson Sphere. A civilization that can use the energy emitted by its own star belongs to the second civilization type, according to the Kardashev scale. This is a method of measuring the level of a civilization's technological advancement based on the amount of energy it can use. The sheer size of these structures must be beyond huge. The distance from the Earth to the Moon is 385,000 kilometers, and the size of the simplest element of this sphere would be about 100 times larger. Furthermore, if we think of this structure being heated up by the Sun up to 1,000 Kelvin as harmless, then the radius of this structure will be about 23 million kilometers which is within Mercury's orbit. Ibrahim Samiz and Salim Ogur calculated the radius for different types of white dwarfs in their study titled Dyson Spheres Around White Dwarfs. The results range from 2 to 5 million kilometers, and the amount of matter needed to create such spheres with one meter thick structure is equivalent to about one moon. Thus, when these structures move around the star, they can block its light. This may explain the deviations in the data shown by abrupt and abnormal dips in Tabby's star's luminosity. But this theory also has a number of caveats. Even huge alien structures should follow the physics laws. They must produce a huge amount of heat, 
but this is far from what astronomers actually observe. A 2017 study makes this version even less plausible. How come? A large object like a Dyson sphere must block the light at all wavelengths simultaneously. The researchers found that the star's infrared light dims less than its ultraviolet light. Any object larger than dust particles will equally dim all light wavelengths as it passes in front of Tabby's star. This means that objects blocking light cannot be larger than a few micrometers in diameter. Hence, it was hypothesized that this was a cloud of dust. This pretty much rules out the alien megastructure theory, as that could not explain the wavelength-dependent dimming, said Juan Meng at the University of Arizona, Tucson, who is the lead author of this study. We suspect instead there is a cloud of dust orbiting the star with a roughly 700-day orbital period, he added. But this poses yet another question of where did all this dust come from to surround such an elderly star? In 2019, a study led by Miguel Martinez proposed an explanation. It suggests it could be a crumbling, icy moon. The light-blocking substance probably has an irregular orbit. Calculations show that the following scenario is possible. A large planet with icy satellites becomes deorbited due to the gravitational interaction with another star. As a result, the planet and its satellites collide with the star and collapse. According to calculations, in 10% of cases, one of the satellites may stay intact and adopt an elongated orbit. For millions of years, this moon would gradually collapse under the influence of stellar radiation, ejecting a dust cloud that could block the light. The main argument for this hypothesis is that the light has to be blocked by small particles. In early 2021, Logan Pierce and his colleagues from the US and the UK showed in their study that the mysteriously dimming star is actually a binary star system consisting of an F-type main sequence star and a smaller red dwarf. They found that the main star and its companion are a common proper motion pair and a gravitationally bound binary system an object on its circular face-on orbit at the current 880 AU separation and a total system mass of 1.9 solar masses would have a velocity of 1.4 kilometers per second and a period of 18,600 years, they wrote. Logan Pierce argues that it's unlikely that the companion currently affects the main star's light curve, but the wide binary system could probably be a part of the puzzle. This dim and inconspicuous galaxy might have never claimed astronomers' attention. But, as you know, one shouldn't judge the book by its cover, especially if you were looking at something through a telescope that is 10 billion light years away, which coincidentally is the exact distance from Earth to Mach S2129-1. When the Hubble Orbiting Telescope first started its operation, it became clear that it's not powerful enough to obtain clear pictures within the visible spectrum. The European Southern Observatory joined the research with its ground-based telescope with quite the humble official name of the Very Large Telescope. By comparing VLT data and Hubble's archived observations, scientists were able to draw unexpected conclusions. Now, this picture is something special. Here, one can see a whole set of amazing effects that can only be observed on a universal scale. This red spindle-shaped narrow oval object is the Mach S2129-1 galaxy. But the way it looks is actually quite misleading. Here's the thing. A whole cluster of galaxies is much closer to us, and their powerful total gravity creates a gravitational lensing effect. B 
before reaching us, the light from the Mac S2129-1 galaxy passes through a specific zone where this effect takes place. Therefore, the galaxy looks brighter than it should, and its shape is greatly distorted. Other galaxies nearby are clearly visible, but are blurred and distorted in the same way. The closest approximation of what Mach S2129-1 looks like is seen in the second highlighted square. This image was obtained by astronomers by using sophisticated software algorithms that removed the gravitational influence of the galaxy cluster. But what is wrong with this galaxy for it to send shockwaves in the global scientific community? The strangest thing here is Mach S2129 1's form. It looks like a typical flat spiral galaxy, which is similar to our Milky Way in many ways. However, it's three times more massive, being only half the size, and it rotates more than twice as fast. The stars in Mach S2129-1 orbit the galaxy's center at a speed of over 500 kilometers per second. According to various estimates on the galaxy's mass, there may be up to a trillion stars in it. But it hasn't formed any new stars for billions of years and can be considered dead in this regard. What then seized the star formation in Mach S2129-1, turning it into a yellow-red cooling graveyard of old stars? There is no agreement among researchers on this matter. One of the recent hypotheses that gets the most traction is that dark matter, which lurks near almost every galaxy, is at fault. Presumably, it could provoke acceleration and extreme heating of regular intergalactic space matter, thereby depriving the galaxy of building materials necessary to form new stars. Let's take one more step in our journey. And by step, I mean moving over 9 billion light years deeper in outer space. NGC 1277 Galaxy was first discovered in 2018 by the Hubble Telescope. It is 240 million light years away from Earth. In the case of Mach S2129 1, we could only see the galaxy's condition 10 billion years ago, with no way of knowing what happened to it up to the present moment. Here, the reverse is true. The galaxy is relatively close, and scientists can say for sure that it has not formed new stars in the last 10 billion years, effectively rendering it dead. But of course, this was not always the case. And from what we know, its young years were quite crazy, to say the least. Researchers argue that following the galaxy's formation, new stars lit up. 1,000 times faster than they do now in our Milky Way. Such a formation rate is absolutely inconceivable. In short, our galaxy produces the equivalent of three solar masses of new stars per year. That's an average of one or two stars, while NGC 1277 spawns many hundreds and even thousands of stars per year. But these days are far behind, specifically about 10 billion years ago. On a universal scale, NGC 1277 can be seen as a precautionary tale of the Earth's jungle law in action. Galaxies also have to make a choice between devouring their peers or dying. NGC 1277 chose the latter. Scientists are almost unanimous on what caused this galaxy's untimely death. NGC 1277 is moving too fast. 
it rushes through the Perseus Galaxy Cluster at a speed of about 3.2 million kilometers per hour and cannot gain mass by feeding on the intergalactic matter or smaller clusters. Another thing that led NGC 1277 to its sad fate is the dangerous route. It moves not far from the Perseus Cluster's center which has quite an unfavorable environment. The intergalactic gas is too hot to form the building blocks for new stars. Metaphorically speaking, NGC 1277 died of starvation and exhaustion. For the same reason, the galaxy couldn't fully form. Astronomers even call it a galaxy with arrested development. NGC 1277 has twice as many stars as the Milky Way, but is only a quarter of our galaxy's size. Yet another surprising thing about NGC 1277 is an anonymously massive black hole in its center. It might be fully or at least partially responsible for the galaxy's rapid burnout. But for all the massiveness of this black hole, it is a far cry from another monster lurking in the center of M87, another dead galaxy. It's time we pay it a visit. The galaxy is located approximately 53 million light years from Earth. Although it is insanely far away, it is virtually a stone's throw from us when compared to the distance of the Mach S2129-1. The relative proximity and gigantic size of the galaxy contributed to its early discovery in 1781 by the French astronomer Charles Messier. The letter M in the name indicates the discoverer's name. According to the new General Catalogs classification, the object is called NGC 4486. The galaxy is observed at the upper border of the constellation Virgo, just below the constellation Coma. If we held an intergalactic competition, then M87 would take prizes in several nominations at once. This galaxy is the largest in the constellation Virgo, the second brightest in the cluster of the same name, and one of the most massive in the local supercluster of galaxies, which is also called the Virgo Supercluster. M87 belongs to supergiant galaxies. It reaches 120,000 light years in diameter, this is slightly larger than the Milky Way's radius, but the galaxies are by no means similar. M87 is not a flat spiral, but a sphere weighing a whopping 2.7 trillion solar masses. According to various estimates, the total mass of M87 may exceed the Milky Way by 200 times with about 12,000 clusters against our 150 to 200. It also surpasses our galaxy by almost two orders of magnitude in terms of the number of globular star clusters. However, all this massiveness and abundance of stars does not change anything in terms of whether the galaxy is dead or alive. The star formation has virtually ceased, meaning that M87 is dead. What brought the galaxy to its demise is the infamous overeating, which was already mentioned in our video. The galaxy consumed everything it could reach throughout its life and eventually got depleted of all the material suitable for star formation. Currently, M87 presents great interest for scientists because of its intensive processes, although they are not related to star formation. For example, on February 26, 1919, it was in this galaxy that the supernova 
SN1919A's flare was detected. But what makes this galaxy truly special is what's inside. The galaxy can brag about a supermassive black hole within a mass of about 3.5 billion solar masses right in its center. It is one of the most massive objects known to date. An accretion disk of ionized gas orbits this black hole with a jet escaping at 99% the speed of light. The jet of incandescent plasma extends for at least 4,900 light years. It was this black hole that a set of radio telescopes from the Event Horizon Telescope Project captured in 2019. This is the first and the only real radiographic image of a black hole's shadow in the world. Magnetars Magnetars are a special type of neutron stars that have an extremely long magnetic field of up to 1,011 Teslas. For comparison purposes, the power of the Earth's magnetic field varies from 25 to 65 microteslas. Magnetars originate from massive stars, initially weighing about 40 solar masses. Like any other neutron star, the birth of a magnetar is marked by an actual galactic light show. Indeed, in order for a magnetar to appear, a massive star must explode into a supernova overshadowing the light of an entire galaxy with its radiance. This gigantic magnetic field is not the only remarkable thing about magnetars. Their powerful bursts of gamma radiation can often be observed for many thousands of light years around. It was these amazing formations that allowed us to see the mysteries hidden in the pitch dark space. Magnetars are amazing outer space creatures. One can almost aptly characterize them with the word extreme, especially in the most unexpected and paradoxical senses of the word. By cosmic standards, magnetars are absolutely tiny. Don't forget that these are actually stars, albeit former ones. If the Sun has a diameter of 1,392,700 kilometers, then magnetars are only 20 to 30 kilometers. Not six or four digit numbers, mind you, just kilometers. Considering their humble size, their mass is enormous. Most of them are much heavier than the Sun. This is why magnetar's density, like that of other neutron stars, is beyond any stretch of imagination. The value will say little even to a savvy person, since such whopping numbers are hard to comprehend. Popular science gives the following analogy. A spoon of such a substance in a stable state would weigh hundreds of millions of tons on Earth. To put this into perspective, Burj Khalifa, the tallest skyscraper in the world, weighs only 500,000 tons. Another impressive point is the rotational speed of this type of neutron star. Most of the known magnetars revolve around their axis several times per second. While being so bizarre, magnetars are at the same time the shortest living space objects with a lifespan of one million years or less. The active phase of the magnetar's life cycle doesn't exceed 10,000 years, which is followed by the magnetic field decay and a sharp decrease in radiation power. A magnetar is a one-day butterfly by space standards. Since magnetars are extremely rare, we only know 30 objects of this kind. 24 are generally recognized in the scientific community, while the remaining six are yet to be confirmed. Magnetars don't vary as much in terms of mass, shape, 
size, and other characteristics of mature stars. Therefore, the number of bizarre features discovered is directly proportional to the depth of the study, and that in turn is due to these objects' proximity to Earth. The closest known magnetar, called 1E2259-586, was discovered in 1981 long before scientists created magnetar theory. It lies 13,000 light years away from Earth in the Cassiopeia constellation. It's no more than 20 kilometers in diameter and revolves around its axis every 6.98 seconds, which is very slow by neutron star standards. It is the source of soft, recurrent gamma ray bursts. Yet, the word soft may sound misguided. This is just a characteristic. Soft gamma radiation is generated during energy transitions inside atomic nuclei, while hard radiation is emitted during nuclear reactions. These soft gamma rays can be powerful enough to cause big trouble, and we'll go into more detail on this in a moment. Typically, when we think about a space threat, we tend to consider only objects close by, an asteroid fall, or a super powerful solar flare in the worst case scenario. But how can something tiny by universal standards, lying tens of thousands of light years away, really harm us? It turns out, it can. The potential threat of magnetars to the Earth is shown by real incidents. These cases bring us back to the very first studies of these phenomena, when the term magnetar wasn't around. On March 5, 1979, at 10.51 North American Eastern Time, two Soviet Venus mission spacecraft, Venus 11 and Venus 12, recorded an intensive gamma radiation burst. From the usual 100 pulses per second, it skyrocketed to 200,000. The frequency increased dramatically in just a fraction of a millisecond. 11 seconds later, NASA's Helios 2 probe orbiting the sun registered a second flare. In a few minutes, it also reached Venus where it was registered by the American probe Pioneer Venus Orbiter. A few seconds later, a powerful radiation wave reached the Earth and was identified by the Vela satellite's detectors of the U.S. Department of Defense, the Soviet satellite Progno-7, and the orbital Einstein Observatory HEAO-2. The international comet researcher then registered the outburst before it left the solar system. This event was the most powerful extrasolar gamma ray emission ever recorded. It turned out to be over 100 times more intense than any extrasolar gamma ray burst known before. The culprit was quickly identified with two arc secondary accuracy. It turned out to be the remnants of a massive star in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which exploded in a supernova around 3000 BC. The object was named SGR 0525-66, a distance of only 165,000 light years saved humanity from some big trouble. A similar event in the early 2000s turned out to be equally or even more powerful. A sharp and powerful stream of gamma rays was registered on December 27, 2004 at 2130 UT, coming from the Sagittarius constellation. If visible light were emitted instead of gamma rays with such power, it would shine brighter than the full moon. The flare lasted approximately 0.2 seconds. However, it managed to cause significant damage to the Earth's ionosphere. It was a well-known magnetar, SGR 1806-20, at a distance of just about 50,000 light-years. 
In a split second, the magnetar directed at the Earth a beam generating 10 to the 40th power of watts, which is more than the sun emits in 100,000 years. If SGR 1806 20 lay at the distance of the nearest star, Alpha Centauri, which is about four light years away, it would take a split second for this enormous gamma ray wave to wipe out all complex life on land and in the upper layers of the oceans. The SGR 1900 plus 14 magnetar, located merely 20,000 light years away, even forced NASA to shut down the near Shoemaker Automatic Interplanetary Station sent to the asteroid Eros in 1998. The gamma ray burst could have easily destroyed the device. Our only consolation is that all the known magnetars are at a fair distance from the Earth. Only here, the word known sounds slightly alarming. Pan is the innermost known moon of Saturn that looks like a giant cosmic ravioli. It is 28 kilometers across and orbits 134,000 kilometers from Saturn within the Enki Gap within the planet's A-ring. Pan is 541.8 times smaller than Earth. This space body was discovered by Mark R. Showalter in 1990, using images taken by the Voyager 2 spacecraft nine years earlier. Since Pan orbits Saturn every 13.8 hours, it acts as a shepherd satellite and is responsible for keeping the Enki Gap in Saturn's A-ring open by gravitationally pushing the ring particles back as they go beyond. The image shows the sunlit side of the ring from a height of approximately 38 degrees above the ring's plane, about 3.2 million kilometers away from Pan. We see the unusual, bizarre shape of Pan's northern and southern hemispheres in these stereo images. Just to put this in perspective, the photos taken from NASA's Cassini spacecraft show how the viewscape has shifted at a distance of 24,600 kilometers from Pan. This was Cassini's closest encounter with it, which showed the small moon in detail and eight times better compared to previous observations. In the photo, we also see a ridge around the lunar equator, which rises for about several kilometers. The ridge is most likely a pile of ring dust that fell on the moon as it cleared the Enki Gap. Something no less strange than Pan is hiding from us near the Virgo constellation, something that looks like a giant Mexican hat. The Sombrero Galaxy, or M104, is a spiral galaxy at the border of Virgo and Corvus constellations. Because it can only be observed from the side, we see it as a flat pancake. The Sombrero galaxy's diameter is approximately 49,000 light years, which is over twice less massive than the Milky Way. It's about 31 million light years away from our galaxy and 800 billion times heavier than the Sun. The galaxy is one of the most massive objects in the Virgo galaxy cluster. M104 was discovered back in 1781 by the French astronomer Pierre Machain. This stunning image of the Sombrero galaxy is one of the largest patchwork pictures obtained by Hubble. What stands out is its shiny, white, bulbous core, surrounded by thick dust strips that make up the galaxy's spiral structure. The photo shows many light points scattered across the convex part, 
which actually form globular clusters. They make the galaxy look like a sombrero hat. The galaxy's dust and inner flat disk are easily seen in the infrared range. At the center of M104, scientists have discovered a black hole with a mass exceeding a billion solar masses. It actively devours matter that accidentally crosses its path. Another study of the Sombrero Galaxy in 2012 found out that it consists of one galaxy nested in another, meaning that it has a kind of bifurcation where a large elliptical galaxy contains a smaller disk-shaped galaxy. Such amazing combinations of two objects are hard to come by in the universe. They are as rare as giant planets with a mass comparable to that of the plastic foam. Kelt 11b is a gas giant exoplanet orbiting a G-type star in the Leo constellation. Its mass is 0.171 that of Jupiter. It's so close to its parent star that it takes the planet only 4.7 days to orbit it. The discovery of Kelt 11b was announced in 2017. This planet is only 20% lighter than Jupiter, but at the same time, it is almost 40% larger. All this points to the fact that Kelt 11b is almost equivalent to polymeric foam in terms of density. In addition to its unusual density, what sets Kelt 11b apart is that its host star is extremely bright. The star, called Kelt 11, is gradually transforming into a red giant. This means that it began to consume its nuclear fuel by melting hydrogen in a shell outside the core. Scientists predict that over the next 100 million years, the outer layers of the parent star will expand so far that it will completely absorb Kelt 11b. Another unusual space object, which will probably completely disappear in a while, looks quite terrifying and frightening. Stars are being born as we speak in a giant dim cloud called the Witch Head Nebula in the Orion constellation some 900 light years away from Earth. The Witch Head Nebula was discovered by German astronomer Max Wolf back in 1909. As the name suggests, this reflection nebula associated with the Rigel star looks like the head of some evil character from fairy tales. Officially known as IC2118, it spans approximately 50 light years across. The Witch Head Nebula shines primarily by reflecting the star's light. Rigel is not just one of the brightest stars that can be seen in the night sky. This supergiant is also one of the brightest stars in the entire galaxy and is over a hundred thousand times brighter than the sun. The nebula consists of a dead star's remains but it looks like it also spawns some new stars. Given its location, this doesn't come as a surprise. The witch head sits at the edge of a region where many young, hot, and bright stars have been born, including Rigel itself. These stars' winds and radiation destroy the nebula, distorting its shape. But they also compress the nebula, causing the gas to accumulate and dust to collapse when the new stars are born. The star formation is accompanied by radiation and winds destroying their birthplace and causing the Witch Head Nebula to eventually disappear. In this image from NASA's WISE Wide Angle Infrared Research Probe, the witch appears to be screaming out into space. 
the nebula's bright blue color can be explained not only by the star's hue, but also dust particles reflecting blue light more efficiently than red. A similar physical process causes the Earth's daytime sky to appear blue. An interesting tidbit, the nebula was used in the Andromeda TV series as the site of a major space battle that threw civilization into an era of chaos. Now, let's move on from war to more pleasant things. How about some fragrant raspberries and strong rum? Now we're talking. But what do these foods have in common with space? Let's find out now. Have you ever wondered what the center of a galaxy smells like? Depending on your preference, the answer might be raspberry or rum. As incredible as it sounds, the discovery was made by astronomers while studying Sagittarius B2, a dust cloud located 390 light-years from the Milky Way's center. Ethyl formate was one of the chemicals detected, which coincidentally is the dominant flavor in raspberries as well as in rum. Also, when using spectroscopy to study Sagittarius B2, the cloud was found to be composed primarily of alcohol, but not the kind found in alcoholic beverages. Rather, it's a mixture of methanol, ethanol, and other deadly substances. But before you start packing for a distant space trip to collect some raspberries and taste rum, there are a few things you need to know. Ethyl formate does give raspberries their flavor, but there are many other molecules that are needed to create the outer space berry. Moreover, the smell can hardly be called pure. So far, scientists have picked up about 50 molecules in the Sagittarius B2 region, and two of them have never been seen before. In any case, it's nice to think that space can be hospitable and tasty. This is the name of a lenticular galaxy located 10 to 16 million light years from Earth. It was first discovered in 1826 by Scotsman James Dunlop, who had already lived in Australia for a long time. The location was a lucky coincidence as Centaurus A lies in the Centaurus constellation which can only be observed in the Southern Hemisphere. What interests us is not the galaxy itself, but the black hole in its middle. The good news is that it's one of the closest black holes to the Milky Way, and at the same time, one of the best studied ones. As usual, we can find a supermassive black hole right in the center of the galaxy. It weighs about 55 million solar masses. What's remarkable about its activity is that it absorbs matter and pushes out a relativistic jet. Following radio observations of the jet over the course of 10 years, astronomers have determined that the inner parts of the jet are moving approximately at half the speed of light. X-ray jets of Centaurus A are thousands of light years long, and radio jets are over a million light years long. Unfortunately, the human eye operates within a very narrow spectrum, and it's impossible to see all the beauty that surrounds the black hole with the naked eye. But with the data obtained in different ranges of electromagnetic waves, we can still enjoy this stunning sight. Since the galaxy is highly luminous and has a relatively large angular size, it is an ideal target for amateur astronomical observations. A bright central bulge and a dark dust streak are visible even with binoculars. 
This is the hiding place of the supermassive black hole. Now, let's fly 10 times farther, about 100 million light years from Earth. This old elliptical galaxy was discovered by William Herschel back in 1784. But of course, he couldn't have imagined the ripple effect his discovery would have two centuries later. The galaxy is located in the Virgo constellation, in the eponymous supercluster, which is home to some unusual cosmic formations. Closely following the introduction of X-ray telescopes, two jets have been spotted emanating from the center of the galaxy. It didn't take scientists very long to confirm that its core was active. They even managed to look into its very heart, which hides a supermassive black hole weighing about 400 million solar masses. It is estimated that the galaxy is about 60,000 light years across, and the jet pushed out by the black hole is about 88,000 light years. Not everyone knows an interesting tidbit about this galaxy. On January 1st, 2001, it became home to supernova SN2001A. Perhaps as a result of this event, another black hole appeared, but naturally it wasn't as massive. In the meantime, let's discover another distant frontier over 2 billion light-years away from Earth. In 1959, the British astrophysicists from the Cavendish Group discovered a radio source using the Cavendish Observatory's Cambridge Interferometer. This was the 348th object discovered in the study, and it turned out to be quite fascinating. 3C348 is a supergiant elliptical galaxy. A thorough analysis showed that the galaxy is over 1,000 times more massive than our Milky Way and is about 10 to the 15th power of the masses of the Sun. And the central black hole is almost 1,000 times more massive than the Sagittarius A-star black hole in the center of our Milky Way, which is about 4 billion solar masses. It is one of the largest black holes known to date. We still have a lot to learn about the galaxy itself, as well as the black hole in its center. At least we know about the galaxy's active nucleus. Also, there have been recorded jets of matter and powerful X-rays emanating from its center using different ranges of electromagnetic waves. The likely source of energy is the matter ejected perpendicular to the accretion disk of the central black hole. Despite lacking accurate information, we can bait our curiosity with incredibly spectacular images of the galaxy. In the photo, we see a multi-wave image from the Hubble Orbiting Telescope, both within and outside the visible spectrum. One can clearly see relativistic jets ejected by a giant black hole and turbulent eddies at their ends. It's time to continue our journey, and the next most interesting object is literally a stone's throw from NGC 4261. This is not just a black hole, but an incredibly powerful engine of a universal scale. At the same time, it is the brightest, deadliest, and one of the most insanely beautiful phenomena in the whole universe. The term quasar stands for quasi-stellar radio source. Such objects are classified as special phenomena. 
But actually, a quasar is nothing more than an active, gigantic nucleus with a supermassive black hole in the center. Similar processes take place there, including the ejection of a relativistic jet. But this phenomenon is super large and luminous. This is precisely what sets quasars apart when compared to other galaxies. This quasar lies in the Virgo constellation, which is especially bright. It is considered the first astronomical object identified as a quasar. It has been extensively studied following its initial discovery in 1963. Earlier, in 1959, the object was deemed an unidentified radio wave source. In addition to being one of the very first identified quasars, it is the closest and the brightest known quasar, being at an unimaginable 2.44 billion light years from Earth. Its great luminosity overshadows the entire galaxy with its hundreds of billions of stars. It's not easy to comprehend it, but the black hole spins the galactic core to such an extent that its light makes hundreds of billions of stars look dim. A telescope view of 3C273 on a starry night looks mesmerizing as it obscures other objects in the sky. There is nothing quite like that in this area of the sky. This quasar has a poignant story too. Dutch musician Arjun Anthony Lucassen dedicated his To the Quasar composition to it, which was included in the metal opera of the space theme. And finally, let's go twice as far to reach a distance of 6 billion light years from Earth. Much like the previous one, it is a dazzling bright quasar driven by a gigantic, supermassive black hole. If we happened to be nearby, we might have caught a completely different glimpse from what we see in the pictures obtained from the Earth's orbit. This black hole with a quasar lies in the crater constellation. Its discovery would stay unnoticed if it wasn't for the team of astronomers led by Rubens Rees from the University of Michigan, who found out something startling. It turns out that the black hole rotates at about half the speed of light, which is an inconceivable angular velocity. Scientists would have never been able to obtain such a high-quality image of such a distant object with modern technology if nature and physics weren't willing to uncover their secrets. We see a blended image of the orbiting Hubble and Chandra observatories. What made this image possible is not only the space telescopes, but also the very nature of this intermediate elliptical galaxy. It is much closer to us than the quasar. Its total gravitational field has created a gravitational lensing effect. The image of the quasar is enhanced and even magnified by four. In the image, the quasar is displayed in pink according to the Chandra Observatory data. A special natural and physical phenomenon has made it possible for us to see the black hole, even though there is just a lenticular galaxy in the center of this bright circle, and a black hole is hidden in the center of a quasar, spread along the edge of the galaxy. Every single black hole image published before the real radio image of M87 was an artistic interpretation, or simply a photoshopped picture. Here, the universe itself does not mind using its own amazing laws to create something spectacular. Our short journey has come to an end, but the era of space discoveries is in full swing, 
and astronomers will certainly excite us with even more stunning and detailed images of unusual space objects in the near future. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel so we can see how many space enthusiasts are out there.